Hey, what is your fiscal year and when do you make budget decisions? We run on a calendar year and um, how, how our sponsorship budget works is we work as hard as we can in Q4 to, um, to basically project out what we know we want to do. And then from there, it, it, becomes a, uh, um, it becomes a discretionary budget on what kind of opportunities are out there. Because if we plan everything to execute in Q1, I can guarantee by April, I'm gonna be upset because something will have come up that I really wanna do and we can't. Yeah, yeah, so we keep, uh, so, so we, we plan as much as we can and then we plan to execute on, on really good opportunities as, as they're presented to us. When is a good time for a racer to meet you or to reach out to you? And should they do it through the website or should they come and approach you at SEMA or one of the trade shows or an event that you're at? We don't do, uh, we haven't done SEMA in a while. Um, we will be walking it this year. And uh, again, we, this year with, with the, the COVID situation, we didn't want to make any commitments to any trade shows. Um, so we That's won't common. be a SEMA or a PRI, but, but traditionally at the trade shows, it's not really a great time. It's a great time to come up and say, hi, introduce yourself, uh, grab my card, make sure you know how to send me an email. Um, if you hand me a proposal, I'll take it. Uh, I will eventually look at it, but I'd probably look at it faster if you came up, said hello, um, talked, you know, had a conversation with me about what you're doing and, and is there any opportunities and then you email it in at a later time. And yeah. uh, I've got uh, a hunter here um, is uh, he is transit and transitioning. He's managing more of the day to day. So they'll come in. Uh, we evaluate, and then once we start to put the wheels in motion, Hunter is the uh, the bulldog that makes sure that everything is is coming through as as it should. Nice. <laughs> so, so how many proposals, or how you know your website makes it pretty clear of what you need to do in order to yeah. be considered for sponsorship? How many of those do you receive a week, a month, a year? I would say uh, one a day is is conservatively safe estimate um oh. you know figure about 10 a week 10 a week all right so yeah. over 500 in a year what Probably. is it that you're looking for then that could get someone to rise to the top for you to consider them or 100 to consider them what what can a racer do to oh, we look at it to, you know himself? yeah um the first thing is uh do they have a are they using anything that we make mm. now? Okay. Um, that's that, important. That's a, that's a big one because <laughs> big one. if, uh, and if they aren't, why not? Uh, because part of that might be, Hey, I made the wrong choices. You know, I, I, I purchased these things and I now realized that, you know, this, this was not the route I wanted to go. And after researching, I've discovered that, you know, you, your stuff is what I need. So, uh, you know, that's, a, that's legitimate. We've all done that. Um, I, I know I have at least, <laughs> and, yeah. you know, in, in my enthusiast purchasing, especially when I was young, you know, you buy what you, what you can afford instead of maybe what you sh should save up for and purchase later. And you learn those lessons and, and then you become a little more sophisticated, but um, the other, so do they have familiarity with AEM? Um, do they understand it? Do they understand uh, what we're trying to do in their space or are they willing to learn about what we're trying to do and what our what our goals are uh do they do they have an audience again are, are you know are they an influencer are they a social media person are they a racer are they a little bit of both um and where does that fit in right. so again if you're you know if you're a hardcore race guy uh we're probably not going to sponsor you if you're like yeah i'll put your sticker on my car and i'll run i'll, I'll go to these races it's not going to work but um but if you, you have a race schedule and you say, yeah, you know, livery is, is an element of the branding, but what I'm more interested in is talking is, is telling or showing people, you know, why I chose your product and how it's helping those guys, they get our attention really fast because they understand that this is something that's going to help them and they have an audience and they can share with that audience how, uh, how what they're doing with us is beneficial. And, um, and, and so that kind of language is, is a, is a really, um, that resonates with us. 
again, we're, you know, we're a small company and we, and we focus on a lot of grassroots racers and the majority of this market is grassroots. A lot of, a lot of privateers out there. So, um, finding the right ones that can tell those stories and, and are influential at the track. And, um, that's, that's a big deal. And the same thing on the influencer side is, uh, what's their audience look like? Um, what, what are they comprised of? Are they real enthusiasts? Are they just fanboys? Um, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of engagement are they really getting? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty common. Know, yeah. So it's, it's not, you know, it's not really rocket science. It's, it's just a lot of homework and due diligence and, and getting as much information you can to make an educated decision or, you know, is it, is it worth uh, the first time um, right. making that investment and taking that risk? Uh, you know, will there be a reward? 